Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Now, this is the Dow Utilities Average, monthly average here. And uh, before I analyze this, I wanted to mention Jennifer and I just the other night watched The Big Short. If you haven't seen that movie, uh, it's it's interesting. It's worth watching. There's a lot of detail about the mortgage market crisis and crash during the 2008 financial crisis. And it's about hedge fund traders who bet against mortgage-backed securities. It's not completely accurate, but there's a lot of information in there about CDOs, CDS, credit default swaps, and... Uh, all of the sliced and diced mortgage bonds that were created and it goes into quite a bit of detail it was a good watch so I encourage you to watch that movie if you haven't seen it so this is the long-term chart going back to it doesn't go back to 93 probably where this bull market started but uh, it goes back to 95 and you can see a fairly consistent trend line here one that in this last recovery actually took us quite some time to get above. Uh, it took us a good four years to even breach the line. Back in the recession after the dot-com bubble, uh, it took nearly the same amount, almost as much time, not quite as much time to penetrate it. But now you can see we've crossed up above it, corrected back down to it, made new highs, and now we're coming down. So these three look very similar. You can also see on the MACD that we have this rolling over effect here. Uh, if we get, you can see if we get that crossover, you can see that that crossover that continued to the downside, that coincided with these points on the chart. And those points were critical stages of financial crisis. So when it starts down and keeps going down and goes through that line, then something big is going to go down in the financial world. So it's definitely shaping up to look like that, and it may coincide with this upcoming election. I've said that for quite some time, talking about the election cycle. Uh, regardless of which way the election goes, we may have some big fireworks here. And I wanted to continue on the topic of the election because uh, it's now starting to shape up to be uh, sort of a debate about feminism or what I'm going to term matriarchy versus patriarchy. And I wanted to play a video here. I think it's a really important video that's been out for some time, but it's, it's kind of gone viral. Uh, these communities, what are called the alt-right, and now they're starting to be paid attention to by some of the mainstream media, although not much attention. But this video is almost a million views, and I encourage you to read the entire, uh, watch the entire thing. This is from Black Pigeon Speaks, and he's talking about why women destroy nations, civilizations, and other uncomfortable truths. I'm going to play just the last part of it here, and then I'm going to talk about some issues regarding the election. So let's go ahead and listen to this. All kinds of studies have been done on this subject, as this one from Columbia University, and they all, without exception, note that as women become more, quote-unquote, emancipated, the decline of the family is further accelerated. And as the family disintegrates and women move politically further and further to the left in their voting, Many then begin to use the government as a surrogate husband and provider. Women are thus even more liberated from their traditional roles within the family and society at large. In one of the most comprehensive studies of civilizational decline, J.D. Unwin postulates in his book, Sex and Culture, written in 1934, that the main driver for the rise of a civilization is the degree of chastity of the said civilization's women. Unwin, a British social anthropologist at Oxford and Cambridge Universities, studied 86 different cultures through 5,000 years of history and found a positive correlation between the cultural achievement of a people and the sexual restraint they observed. Unwin's impetus for the project was to test the Freudian theory that civilizational progress was the product of repressed sexuality. He found that discipline in sexual matters appropriated social energy to more civilizational ends, 
It's very complicated, but for Unwin, the fabric of society was primarily sexual, and heterosexual monogamy was the optimal arrangement for the planning, building, protecting, and nurturing of the family. If enough heterosexual partners made a monogamous commitment, civilizational energy was directed toward promoting the finest societal foundation possible. Without exception, each civilization he studied allowed its success to alter its moral code. According to Unwin, after a nation becomes increasingly liberal with regards to its sexual morality, it loses its cohesion, its impetus, and its purpose. From a chaste moral code, societies gain what he called expansive energy, and this energy allowed these cultures to expand into other weaker cultures. Now, when you compare the modern Western world with the Islamic one, you see exactly the results that Unwin's theory would predict. By allowing women to fuck freely, the West has de facto entered a matriarchy that disincentivizes young men. Islam, on the other hand, keeps their women chaste. And their expansive energy, as Unwin's theory predicts, is manifested in what we're observing today. The Islamic culture is the one who's expanding into the West. And it was only recently that the West was able to dominate all other cultures on the planet. Ultimately, each civilization became less cohesive, less aggressive, and less resolute. Civilizations in this liminal phase then collapsed from either A, an internal anarchic revolution, or B, conquest by invaders with greater social energy. Terrifyingly, Unwin also noted that there was no case in any of the studies he'd made in which a culture managed to restrict the sexual freedom of women once they'd been loosened. A feminist society and future is an oxymoron, as it's unsustainable in the long run. Based just on past history, a civilization that embraces feminist values will cease to exist in a very short time. This is why we've never seen a feminist civilization aside from very short spans at the end of great empires. The signs of decline are already observable. While many countries are sliding into social decline, the canary in the coal mine is the self-described humanitarian superpower that pursues a feminist foreign policy. When looking at Sweden, it's one of the most gender equal countries on earth. And while they've become the rape capital of Europe, they're flushing their culture and country down the toilet and pressing forward in their civilizational suicide at an ever accelerating pace. The total and complete feminization of Sweden and its men have allowed their women to invite their country's own destruction through the importation of millions of unassimilatable and aggressive people from completely alien cultures. Not only are they borrowing money to fund the colonization of their country, but they are now even creating gender imbalances that will have severe and lasting repercussions on their society's future. And they await their doom with smiles of tolerance and passivity, calm as Hindu cows. Looking again at Unwin's work, he leaves us with a stark dilemma. It may not be possible to save the West. According to his model, this process is irreversible. And the only way to do so would be to restrict the sexual freedom of Western women and move back to a more patriarchal society. And as things stand, this is probably an impossibility. So, instead of having it all, Western women risk losing everything. What are liberal feminists going to do when faced with aggressive gangs of migrants bent on theft and sexual violence? Burn their bras and throw a pocket edition of cunt a declaration of independence at them? The violence now being directed toward Western women in their own countries is undeniable proof of the breakdown of the leftist utopian ideals for society. The million migrants that have already arrived and the millions on their way already understand that the West is a toothless civilization ripe for plunder. While Western women might be the ones advocating, whether knowingly or not, for the destruction of the West via misplaced compassion and hyper-emotionalism, it's also the fault of Western men by giving them the choice and allowing their gender's particular predilections to dictate what our civilization's values, priorities, and ultimately what our future should and will be. And maybe Unwin is right. Maybe there is no peaceful way to resolve this crisis of our civilization. Our feminized society hasn't built an equality rainbow that'll usher the West into a nirvana of peace and security based on mutual respect and tolerance. No, 
it has succeeded in paving the way for the takeover and Islamization of the West. Ironically, it'll be feminine tendencies and policies that rule our society, if not kept in check, that will bring down the more gender-inclusive states of the West and replace them with the tribalism of Africa and the Middle East and the hyper-masculinity of Islam. You can have a feminized society, but it won't survive Islam. And here's the crimson red pill of this video. Western men have given Western women freedom of will and choice in their own society. And Western women are now choosing who will take it away from them. If this kind of material resonates with you... So that's like Black like, Pigeon Speaks, uh, very controversial and uh, very hot video uh, in the alternative community. And that's a growing alternative community. I wanted to cover a couple of these and then talk about the election. So uh, two of the communities that I keep an eye on are MGTOW, and this is a metric of Reddit that shows the growth of this particular subreddit, which is 16,320 subscribers. Not really that big, but has been growing very, very rapidly during this election campaign season and also with the uh, coverage by the mainstream media starting to talk about some of this. It stands for men going their own way. And what this is, is a reaction of men to uh, a matriarchal society in the West, specifically America, Canada, the Western countries, and basically men turning their backs on their traditional role, which is marriage and family, because they see the laws rigged against them and it's not in their interest to pursue that anymore. Now that's a small community. Another much larger community is the Red Pill. And the Red Pill is a community of men who have, this comes from uh, the pickup artist community, which is a group of men who started studying women's behavior and ways to pick up women. And springing out of this was a group called the Red Pill, which is a group that uh, contends that human nature is quite different than most people think and that women aren't the way feminists portray them. And so most of this subreddit is about sexual strategies. It's very anti-feminist. Both of these are anti-feminist. But as opposed to the MGTOW community, this community is sort of a community about taking advantage of the matriarchy in the West to be uh, a word that they find very objectionable that I often use is to be a whoremonger or a person who takes advantage of the morals in our society by taking advantage of women. So in regards to this election, what type of election is this? Well, I'm, I'm naming this matriarchy versus patriarchy, uh, and that may be what's stacking up in this election to be the case. But really, this is more, Donald Trump is more of a red pill rather than a MGTOW. So the stuff that's coming out about Donald Trump, and I don't think that anybody is surprised by it because he hasn't really made a secret of it, that he's a womanizer. We know that he divorced Ivana and married, uh, he, I don't know how many times he's been married, but he, he's been pretty open about the fact that he's a womanizer and that he sees that as a good thing. So there's an alt-right twist to this because this is not the traditional conservative pro-family party. That's the traditional Republican Party, a Christian-based one. This is more sort of an alt-right election now. And so Trump seems to be the alt-right candidate. Hillary certainly isn't matriarchal in the sense that uh, she embodies all the gentle feminine qualities. But there's no question that the feminists are lining up behind Hillary Clinton and that the men's rights people are lining up behind Donald Trump. So that's what this election is starting to shake out to be. Now, I personally think that Trump is much preferable to Clinton, and that goes into my extensive research into the disgusting and criminal behavior of the Clinton family, including the Bush family, and 
uh, all of the rest of the politicians, neocons that are involved with that. Now, I think most of what is about Donald Trump is out on the table, although I don't know that for sure. There definitely have been rumors that both the Clintons and the Trumps have been involved, were involved with that Epstein, that uh, billionaire child molester island person. So that very well could be the case. I don't know. But it's definitely lining up to be an election between the strong male patriarchal figure of Donald Trump and the powerful matriarchal figure of Hillary Clinton. And it appears that either way, there's going to be some serious fireworks that occur when once the election results come in. And we'll talk to you next time.